Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Amar Tech Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on top 10 OSPF interview question and answers. So all my friends who are planning to attend for routing switching interview, this video is going to be very important to you because this video is going to focus on interview questions of OSPF. So guys, let's start with question number one. Question number one says, tell us something about OSPF. So when the question comes like, tell us something about OSPF, it is like uh, you need to give certain... Uh, introduction about OSPF that what OSPF is so OSPF basically is an IGP routing protocol and it is an open standard routing protocol that is it can be used on multi-vendor devices so when I say on multi-vendor devices that means I can run this routing protocol on Cisco routers on Juniper routers, Huawei routers and other routers so this is a very uh, what I can say very important a characteristic of OSPF that is an open standard so multi-vendor devices can use this routing protocol again a very important characteristic of OSPF is that OSPF is a link state routing protocol so since it's a link state routing protocol OSPF router is going to have something known as end-to-end -end visibility of the entire network in form of topology table so guys whenever this question is asked that tell us something about OSPF you have to mention this point that OSPF routers have something known as topology table by which OSPF router have end-to-end -end visibility of the entire network OSPF router uses something known as Dijkstra algorithm that is also known as SPF that is Dijkstra SPF shortest path first algorithm which actually run on this topology table and find out the best route to reach to a particular destination. So this is again a very important point. Again, this can be a very, I uh, can say a different interview question where it can be asked that what is the algorithms which, which OSPF uses to find out the best route to a particular destination. So again, this point is very, very, very important. Uh, another point, what is the AD value of OSPF? So the routes which are learned via OSPF routing protocol, the AD value of them is 110. Always guys, we have to remember this value 110. For any routing protocol, you know, remembering the AD, AD value, if you're preparing for any interview, it is very important that you remember AD value of each and every routing protocol. So for o, in case of OSPF, the AD value is 110. 10. Let's move to a very important question. Whenever guys you are going to attend an OSPF interview, 95 percentage of chances are there that you will attend. Uh, you have to attend this question also because it is related to metric, which is a very important uh, question in OSPF. I have faced it almost every time whenever I have given interview on OSPF. So metric of OSPF is cost. Metric in OSPF is known as cost. Many people tend to answer this wrongly saying that you know metric and cost are not two different things. The metric of OSPF is known as cost. That is how it is. And this cost depends upon bandwidth of the link. Basically, this cost is inversely proportional to bandwidth. So when we say inversely proportional to bandwidth, it means greater the bandwidth lesser the cost and lesser the cost guys better the path so wherever you have higher bandwidth that is having a lesser cost and if you're having a lesser cost that is the best route because that is the best metric you have so for example this is a formula guys actually a uh, cost is equal cost in ospf is equal is equal to 100 divided by bandwidth in mbps so if you have a link for example say of uh, 10 mbps uh, the cost is going to be 100 divided by now this is the bandwidth in mbps so that is 10 so it will be cost is going to be 10 and if you have a bandwidth of bandwidth link of 100 mbps the cost is going to be 100 divided by bandwidth mbps that is 100 so it is going to be 1 so guys, this cost is less than this cost. So this cost is better cost. So this is how cost is calculated in OSPF. What is router ID? Uh, guys, as we all have names by which we get identified. In the same way, in OSPF domain, 
OSPF routers are identified by their router IDs and uh, this router IDs uh, are uh, nothing but like no, this is the definition guys you, you just need to remember this because uh, it is the highest IP address of loopback interface and absence of loopback interface it is the highest IP of the active physical interface so I will try to explain you this one uh, consider this is a router OSPF router Okay. And this OSPF router is having two loopbacks. Loopback 0 IP 100.1.1.1 slash 32 and another loopback 200.1.1.1 slash 32. Again, it have two physical interfaces, serial 0 and serial 1. Uh, serial 0 is having IP address say 10.1.1.1 slash 24 and serial one is having 20.1.1.1 slash 24 but the serial one is down this is up this are again up both of them are up now what will be the ospf router id in this case in this case the ospf router id will be the highest IP address of the loopback interface so we have two loopback interfaces one is having address of 100 and the other is having address of 200 so this 200 is the highest one so 200.1.1.1 is the OSPF router ID and in absence of loopback like if this loopbacks are not present then in absence of loopback it will be the highest IP of an active physical interface now here we have two physical interface but we have only one active interface that is this so that is this one serial zero so the router id will be 10.1.1.1 so guys in this way router id is figured out so router id is the identification of the router in ospf domain and it is the highest ip address of a loopback interface and in absence of a loopback interface it is the highest ip address of an active guys always remember active physical interface okay we can also manually assign hard code ospf router id but it requires a router reboot or ospf process reset so again this point need to be noted while answering this question guys question number four what are the tables which are built and maintained in ospf guys there are three kind of tables which are built and maintained in ospf uh one table i think i have actually told you that is the topology table uh, it which contains all possible routes to reach all networks within an area i'll tell you what is the area is in the next question uh, neighbor table neighbor table is the list of the neighbors which an ospf router have and a routing table is again the best route to reach or to know uh, or to reach uh, each possible network so this is what it is like neighbor table topology table and routing table so we have this three kind of table so guys this is again a question which i have faced not many times but i think two times yeah maybe two times because each and every after every interview i used to note down the questions which i faced on every topic so it, it actually helped me you know building this kind of uh, videos uh question number five what is the concept of area in ospf guys again this is a very important question very important question which you need to answer very uh, precisely i would say without getting confused uh, creating areas in ospf is not for summarization that is a wrong answer because many people tend to give this answer that we create areas in ospf to do summarization no summarization happens at abr that is correct but in ospf we create areas simply because to stop frequent spf updates now this is the very first point which i have wrote in this answer that is in ospf each router have visibility of the entire network in form of topology table that is a very important point since this router have visibility of the entire network and if you are running ospf on a huge network where hundred of routers are present and there each router is handling thousands of route in that kind of scenario guys if in case if in case something goes down in any part of the domain 
each and every router is going to get an update and if you have a huge network that is going to happen each and every second maybe or each and every minute maybe and the process what your OSP of router is going to utilize will be always high your router OSP of routers will be always always having high CPU utilization they will be always busy in processing those frequent SPF updates because whenever something going, is going to go down in anywhere in the domain a route is going to get flooded to all the routers in the OSPF domain so to stop it or to control frequent SPF update OSPF in the, in the OSPF domains areas are created so once you create areas the updates get localized within that area I will try to explain you with the help of an example also for better understanding I just don't want to make this video long but still I just will try to answer this question in a better in diagrammatic way also uh, consider you have uh, this router R1 uh, R2 R3 R4 R5 R6 R7 and a lot of routers like R1001 you have thousands of routers now so this kind of routers you have a big network you have and again this is a complete OSP of domain you have all the routers and R3 is also in this so what did R3 is now here okay now even if a route of this particular router goes down this update is going to going to get flooded to all the routers because this particular route for example you think from the point of view of this router this particular route router is going to have update or is going to have uh, routes to all the networks since it have something known as topology table okay now each and every second in a huge network something is going to go up or down so this this router is going to get each and every update which it may require or not but because of that update frequent updates the processor of this particular router may go high the bandwidth may be utilized more so to stop that unnecessary SPF updates or to localize the SPF updates we can create areas within this OSPF domain that is we can make these three routers a part of an uh, area then uh, maybe this routers a part of an area so like that simply again these areas again depends upon network administrator the part what network administrator is handling what kind of uh, network because if your network is used then only you will make areas so guys answer this question very 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 precisely if possible draw the diagram and explain your interviewer it will really create a good impression so guys i'll stop here in this video i'll continue in this part and uh, we'll see question number six so where should i cover uh, question number six yeah i'll cover it i think so yeah i can do it so not making much land here so i can do it so we'll, we'll do it in the next video uh part two uh that is the timers in ospf what are the timers in OSPF and, and other, other four questions also I have. So uh, guys, catch you in the next video. Uh, till then, guys, prepare well. Best of luck. Catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe my channel. If you really like this video, please share these videos with your friends, with your colleagues. Uh, and help me getting more likes and more views on the videos, which will uh, motivate me to make more and more videos. So guys, again, catch up in the next video. Thank you.